Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, I want to talk about vitamin D deficiencies. And specifically, when you go get a test, you want to make sure that you always have them assess not just the inactive version of vitamin D, but the active version of vitamin D. There's two types. And uh, when you go to the doc or you go to the, uh, the lab to get tested, rarely do they assess the active uh, type of vitamin D. The inactive type is the most commonly one assessed, and that's called 25-hydroxy vitamin, vitamin D. The active is 125-dihydroxy vitamin D, okay? Just make notes of those words and just present that to your uh, practitioner when you, get, when you wanna get testing because there's several situations that can occur um, if you have low inactive vitamin D but high active vitamin D, okay? Because a lot of things can influence this. Um, for example, if you have low inactive and low active, that could be just because you're not consuming vitamin D in your diet, which is mainly, mainly animal products, uh, or if a, you're a vegan, it could come from mushrooms, but it also comes from sun. So let's say you have get no sun, well, it's gonna be low, right? Uh, because vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, it gets stored in the body for a period of time, but you could eventually become depleted. Or let's say, for example, um, your gallbladder is missing, or you have a gallbladder problem and you don't have enough bile because you're bile deficient now. That's the consequence of not having a gallbladder or you just don't concentrate the bile. So thereby you, don't, you can't di even digest the, uh, um, the uh, vitamin D because it's a fat soluble vitamin. So you're always becoming deficient because of that. Or let's say another scenario where you uh, have gastric bypass surgery. Well, this is another situation where you could have low vitamin D because the comp, uh, compromised digestive system, something's missing. Another situation is um, the parathyroid. The parathyroid controls vitamin D, okay? It actually activates an enzyme to convert the inactive to the active. So most problems with the parathyroid, especially a, a tumor in the parathyroid, they have a lot of that hormone coming out, creating this conversion all the time. So they have high levels of calcium, and very high levels of active vitamin D, but very low inactive because it's being converted, because the parathyroid gland triggers an enzyme to make this conversion. So with a parathyroid problem, you'll have low um, inactive, but you'll have high active. So if you don't know that, and they only test this one version, you start consuming this uh, vitamin D, and you don't really need it. You need to fix the parathyroid. So a lot of things will influence um, these tests. Like kidney function, liver function, if you're taking acid blockers uh, for uh, GERD or heartburn, taking medication diuretics, steroids, adrenal stress, autoimmune disease, all these things influence um, your vitamin D levels. So here's the summary. Basically, always check your inactive and your active so you can compare and look at the big picture, okay? Thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book, goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, 
the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.